Brenda Milner described this very beautifully, and she studied them from about 1956 to about 1968, and mapped this in some detail. And for many years, she thought that this defect that he had applied to all areas of memory storage. And then she made a fantastic finding. She found that this defect in memory applied only to certain aspects of knowledge. There were other aspects of knowledge which were completely untouched. And the way she found this is that she had him do a number of motor skills. One very simple one was a mirror writing task. She had him draw the outlines of a star that she had put on a piece of paper. He drew the outlines of the star with a pencil, but not being able to look at the pencil or his hand or the star except through a mirror. Now, when you and I do that, we make a number of mistakes over a period of days, but then our performance improves. So that initially, if we plot the percentage of errors, and let's say we have 100 errors there and zero errors there, we make a lot of mistakes. And then on consecutive days, we get better and better until ultimately we make practically no mistakes at all. This is what you and I would do in a task like this. Well, H.M. was the same way. He had first made a number of mistakes, but he improved every single day. But if you ask them on the fourth day, on Thursday, how come you're doing so much better on Thursday than you did on Monday, he would say, what are you talking about? I've never done this before in my life. So he would reveal in his answer to the question that in certain areas of life, he had an absolute memory defect, while other things he learned perfectly well. 